major events in our lives like this one, I've heard folks in the past say, those who have passed on before us um, are watching down from above, and they probably are. But tonight I have to tell you about someone whose absence here this evening isn't obvious to everyone. 30 years ago on Monday, Candace and Katie's older sister, Kellyanne, passed away. She was only five weeks old. Those 39 days in 1983 were not the lifetime that, Candace, or that Sandy and I had hoped for her. But we are grateful to God, grateful to God this day that He chose us to be her mom and dad. There is absolutely nothing we can say this evening that will adequately express how much she still loved and missed. As you can imagine, in the weeks and the months following her passing, my darling wife and I endured great sadness. But I want everyone within the sound of my voice to know tonight that it is only because of a good and just God that we are here today, this evening, to celebrate great happiness. On the program, there are names of those who have left us who are not in attendance tonight. We could spend the entire evening, and some of us probably will, recounting what each of them meant to us in some way during our lives, and certainly to Brian and Candace because they chose those names. But I, meant, I must pass along something to you and to Brian that from the person on the list that I knew the best, and as I look back at my life, and I recall the highlights in my life, nothing stands out like those one-on-one -on -one conversations I had with your granddaddy. And I miss him so much. But he, Brian reminds me a lot of him. He was sensitive, he was humble, he was a godly man, he was a good man. One July afternoon, five days before he passed away, it was after we had watched some old black and white movies, and he and I just loved to do that. We would we would doze off, and he would snore too loud and wake himself up. And I remember that. And he'd look over at me and say, "What?" <laughs> but. After those old movies, he asked me to do several things. He knew, and I knew, it was probably our last conversation. But he asked me to do several things. Among them, he asked me to encourage your cousin Todd as he contemplated law school. He asked me to call my brothers and my sister to keep the family in contact and together. And I say the most important Thing for you, your sister, Ryan, and your cousins. Your granddaddy was not a financially wealthy man, but his wisdom left us such a rich legacy. And from that legacy, I give you the same continuous, unwavering counsel that he gave me, and I watched it work in his life. He asked me to assure you that if you will walk closely with God, put Him first, and prioritize Him everything. Not just the blessings, but everything in your lives will fall into place. I'm sorry all the funny stuff was in the beginning, but I, I, I... This kid has meant so much to me over her 28 years that I am taking this opportunity, and I told her, I'm going to be embarrassed. 
I don't care. There are several things I want you to know, but I want everybody to be a witness to help you and Brian in the future. Other than the birth of my three daughters and the marriage to my wonderful, patient wife and the Christmas in 1966 when I got my own bicycle. <laughs> This will go on the list as the happiest, one of the happiest days of my entire life. It, it will. And over those 28 years, Candace and I did what most fathers and daughters do. We formed a bond. And our bond is represented by the hope your birth brought your mother and me. After our beloved Kim, Kellyanne passed away. Our bond is known by the joy and laughter that you have brought to our lives the entire time. It is known by the unquestionable trust you placed in us as parents. And we were then graced by God to return to you unconditional love. Unconditional love. You'll know what that means when you have children. Our bond is also known by your forgiving heart, and it's appreciated. It's known by the admiration I have of my daughter for pursuing a selfless career. And it will be known in the years to come by the joy of this day. It, it's almost done. Okay? It's almost, you will be eating before you know. Strong, sensitive, honorable, heart of gold, selfless. Candace used those words to describe her future husband to me in the week or so after she witnessed his heart break after his grandmother passed in February. I had asked her to only use one word, but she couldn't do it. God chose you to spend your life with Candace, and I know he made a good choice because I trust him with this. For several years already, you've been a part of this family, but today you've become our son. And you heard me mention earlier, unconditional love. Sandy's and my unconditional love follows who we both. And he plays the violin really well, too. <laughs> and if you will bow your heads, I now want to share with you my version of a parent's prayer for two wonderful, wonderful kids. May God bless your marriage and you and keep you always. May his light be made to shine down upon you all the days of your lives. May his love be forever with you. May his blessings be abundant and obvious to you. May you always be protected by him and held in the palm of his caring hands. And may every sunrise bring you hope and with every sunset you find peace. These things your mom and I ask in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen.